Actually, no, just a soccer ball. Just a ball. soccer ball, because you've got open space. Girls, girls against boys. We got it right here. Oh, good pass. your water? Yeah. Well, the one nice thing about autopilot is, you said you wanted water? Sure. There you go. Good job, autopilot. Dada. Yes. I want my crackers. Oh, you want some crackers? Well, guess what? I got some for you. Thank you. You're welcome. But you gotta stay alert. There was no one in front of me. I had confidence on a pilot would take care of it. Focused once again. My favorite part is the auto um, drive capability, you know, the, the uh, autopilot, yeah. autopilot. I mean, I can turn that thing on and, and sort of keep my hand on the wheel and, you know, not necessarily wander from one side of the road to the other like, you know, you do if you're not really paying close attention. So it can do, say, 80% of my driving for me and I can just pay attention when I need to, like if construction's coming up or some truck's coming along or whatever. Wow. So that makes it uh, makes it more comfortable and less fatiguing to take long trips. Our goal is to be the first family of five to go coast to coast. Well, you might make it. see in front of us? Tesla delivery truck. Wow, what's on that delivery truck? Model 3s. Model 3s? Let's go see the colors. Come All on, right. Mama, get your turn signal. Good, we're going to take a picture of this. How are you taking that picture oh. right now? Oh. Oops. <laughs> a oh. hands-free autopilot? <laughs> Should we honk and see if that's our delivery truck driver? Should we honk? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're here in El Paso at the Supercharger Station at Rudy's Barbecue. So if you're ever going through El Paso, you've got to stop. They have great barbecue. However, we're on our way 
to Carlsbad Caverns National Park. Now the reason we're here, we're getting a full charge to go to the caverns because, let's look right over here actually, it's 157 miles. Then there's no charger between here and then the next charger we see is down here at Van Horn. There may be some charging up here, but we can't verify it or we don't want to be dependent on it. So we're getting a full charge and then going down here to Van Horn is about 100 miles is what it says. So all you Model 3 owners know a max charge is about 300 miles. So that's what we're going to do. So this 100 and 157 is going to take us to 250. So we got 50 miles to play with, right? So we better drive efficiently, otherwise we're not gonna make it. So that's gonna be part of the drama for today. Uh, so let's see, so right now let's see how we're doing on our charging. So we're at 284, so we're gonna charge it up not quite all the way, just so we can uh, take care of the battery. Uh, so, but we should get to just about 300, and we'll see how well we do. Hopefully we'll see you, of course at the caverns, we'll make it there but hopefully let's see you at the next supercharger. Speed limit is 75 however we're gonna be doing 50 or 55 because right now when we get to Carlsbad we're gonna have 44% again we still have enough to get back to our charging station that we mentioned right down here we're off the grid literally off the grid so we're on our own so we don't want to mess up the navigation because it will possibly lose us so knows where we're going right now we got to stop at a inspection station so let's see what they're going to inspect <laughs> that we're passing the time in the car is I brought a couple different books and these are a Lightkeeper series, 10 Boys Who, and this one is about who made history. There's some about who um, were adventurous or had their talents or made a difference or changed the world. And so we are just taking a chapter a day and just learning a little bit about a little boy who made a difference in history. So this is our miracle for the day. We were unaware that there was a rest stop that's just about 30 miles outside the caverns. We probably missed the sign because we were paying so much focus on keeping the car efficient. But anyway, our kids were so excited. So we stopped here, we almost passed it. You notice the car's backwards. So we turned around and went in and now we're gonna go back on the road. And next to where you see us, we'll be at the caves. Carlsbad Caverns National Park and there's something we wanted to point out to you on autopilot. Take a look right here. As we go around the turn, you can actually see the steering wheel turn. And these are some pretty sharp turns that the autopilot is taking and it's doing a great job. But notice that. So not does it only tell you that autopilot steering is engaged, but it's also monitoring and showing you that the steering wheel is turning. So you can see right here, we've got a lot of windy roads and here comes another one. So let's see, once again. Let's turn it a little bit and it's matching the 
the steering wheel. So that was something unique that we noticed. Sebastian, this big hall room. It's called Big Room. This is Big Room. Get this and are there room. really bats down there? Uh -huh. Are there bats? Not in the big room. The bats actually live up in here. And the only time you see them is when they fly out at sunset. Okay. Are you guys going to be around tonight? What time is that? What time would that? 6.30? Alright, we gotta listen to it. Alright, so have we been in the cave before? No. Anywhere else? This is our first time in the cave? Mm -hmm. Really? It's right here recording. Alright. Come on. All right. Listen to it. Do you wanna know how, how far you're gonna go in? Yes. Into the ground? Yeah? So you're going down about 75 stories. Um, 750 feet. It'll take one minute on these elevators to get, get to the bottom. And right at the bottom, you're gonna walk into the underground rest area. It is a place where you can buy food, eat a snack if you want to. But outside of that, we only wanna take water. That's all we brought, right? Awesome. Um, the last chance for a bathroom is right at the bottom, okay. so don't go anywhere else in the cave. Okay. This right here is a, is a cave formation. It was removed when we were building the trails, and we can touch this one, see what it feels like. So that's a real one. What is mm -hmm. it, a stalagmite or stalactite? Stalagmite. Stalagmite. Mite, why? why? Because it's looking up. Yeah. Exactly. A stalactite is looking down. Good job. You got it. Hmm. Yeah. But it's really important that in the cave we don't touch any of the rocks. There's oil in our skin and it'll stain it. Exactly. Yep. Other than that, we just need you to stay on the trail to protect you, to protect the cave. Can you make sure the adults don't get lost? Will you keep us Can you stay with them? <laughs> yeah, awesome. You want to talk to us like a little rough. It is a little rough. I think it might have broken there. Just a little bit. So that's the real one. Wow. So the bottom is soft. Like the top is really rough, but the other stuff. Um, last thing, our voice can heckle really far in this cave. So when we're down there, we just want to talk and whisper. Oh, geez, your library can we voice. do that? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Can you whisper? All right. Okay. If you are ready to go, one of you can push this button right here. You're not going to go with us? No. Oh. It's all self guided. Okay. So I send you on the elevators and. Oh, wow, we're on elevator. our way. Yes. He's going to start us off. Go ahead and push the button. Ready, let's go. Yep, right Matthew, here. do? Push it. We're gonna go down. Ready? It's ready. Alright. Say bye, Mr. Josh. Bye, have fun. Bye. It's really cool, okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome, yeah. Okay, which now which one? Um, okay, next to the CR. Where we're going? Where it says are we going? This one. Yep. yep. Alright. Let's see how far you're going down on the screen. Look at the map. The map is gonna show like this one. The bottom one, yep. yep. And start. so look at this. We're going. 750 Mommy. feet. Mommy, I'm scared. I know. Oh, we're going to caves. But we're going to be safe. Flat night. The big room is Flat equivalent tight. to the size of six football fields. Flat it's about 56 degrees Fahrenheit. How many feet did he say we're going down? 750. It takes about a minute to get down here. And we're almost there. The elevators were just completed this summer. Flat Tight and slide mine. Oh, Once we go out that side, Daddy, watch out. Yeah, let's we'll see which side. We'll see. We'll we should see. have our uh, headlights. Hey, okay. our lamps. They're in the trunk. I forgot about them. Take a deep breath, Katie. Ready? Take a deep breath. <laughs> You're gonna see some beautiful things in here. And the lights so are. Dark. When our eyes get adjusted, we'll be able to see a lot better. This is where you have to trust. Why can't we touch it? Well, because remember, what did the guy say? Our oils from our hands may ruin those formations. Guys, we just need to take a minute and look at this beautiful Where creation. Where are the lights coming from? So you're seeing shadows, right? Look so at, the light there, Katie. is casting a shadow, and on the other side is another shadow. We are 750 feet below the ground. Mm -hmm. 
to the cave. Well, yeah. after they, after they have something. So you know what we might see? We might see something after, drippy. After they put down this Yeah, I, wanna, I don't want to get wet. Not on the path. The path is our safe path. Do you remember what God says? If we stay on the path, what will happen? Let's say, say. But it happens if we get off the path. Well, not say, say. So you have a choice to be wise or foolish. What choice are you going to make right now? Wise. A wise choice is what? Okay. Staying on the path. That's a slide ride and slide kite at That's the same our, time. See, what happens when you overcome your fear and you can enjoy what you're seeing? To the park, right down to the I want to go back home. You want to go back home? No, we can't go that path. Okay, we're going to walk together. Other cave deposits made chiefly of calcite are called decorations, are spleleothems. See how these look like soda straws? We said like ice, icicles. Your eyes are beautiful. God gave you those eyes to see. It's really hard to like explain the magnitude Mama. and how big this room is. Just a like regular, and the rest are holes. So which one was the stalagmite? And where's the stalactite? And then the popcorn? All these look at these little little stalagmites that are starting, guys. Come here, come here, Nathan, Katie, come here, come here. Amazing cave, huh? These are pretty cool. What's been your favorite part? Um, the slag mine and slag type touching each other. The columns that connect, yeah. There's some areas where we have 30 foot stalag stalactites and 30 foot stalagmites that are only like an inch apart. And we saw one of those. Yeah, there was one over there, maybe about six And those, the Hall of Giants, those 60 foot stalagmites are some of the biggest formations I've ever seen. We're still finding more. They just discovered a new room above the big room five years ago that, that oh. we didn't know about before. So, so how, how much um, like flooring is there between them? Do they, can they measure yeah. that? Yeah. Um, where that room goes above the big room, there's about 30 feet of bedrock in between the two, okay. which is plenty safe. A room that was discovered five years ago, that's because a room was discovered up there 30 years ago, and our cave specialist at the time um, he did a mapping of it, but then our more modern day cave specialist, he looked at the map and he's like, you know, we could do a more detailed map of this. Mm -hmm. So he got permission from the superintendent to go do a more detailed map. So they're up there doing the more detailed map and he's, he's like, well, there's a little alcove that's, it's on the map, but it's not sketched out. So let's go check that out. Mm -hmm. And they get up on this alcove and he's like, hmm, 
there's a tunnel here yeah, and it keeps going. Um, so it was a, a similar story that happened just two weeks ago where they were doing some detailed, more up-to-date detailed mapping of an area and they're like, well, that hole um, wasn't explored on this last map. Okay. But this hole was so tight, it was only a seven inch gap. Um, so very few cavers could fit through it. Do they have um, snake cameras or? Well, seven inches is plenty of space for some cavers. Okay. So this particular <laughs> mapping trip, it was four girls, four female cavers that went wow. that were all pretty athletic and uh, flexible. Seven inches. And really? they struggled to fit through, but they fit through. And they named that little tunnel, uh, the Twisted Sister. And then that it opened sense. up into a room they could stood up and stand up in. There's wow. one tunnel in the back of the big room that's named the Bemis Tunnel, because only Tom Bemis has ever fit through it. And the Bemis Tunnel is five and a half inch gap. And he has fit through it. And he got into a room that he could, that he could sit up in called the Bemis Chamber. And, and there's a tunnel that goes past the Bemis chamber that he couldn't fit through, so. Huh. So Tom Bemis, who is he and where is he? He's still around, he's in his 70s, and he, he still is one of the top cave rescue technicians wow. in New Mexico. And his wife, Manny Bemis, is always here doing volunteer work with That's our interp nice. department. And Manny Bemis's grandmother was the secretary of the first superintendent of this park back in the 20s. So their family ties back to this park, almost back to the beginning. Wow, amazing. And how long you been working here? Well, I've been at this park for two years, um, but I've worked in caves my whole life. I worked at a cave in Canada, I worked at a cave in Texas, but I first started working at a cave in Pennsylvania, uh, a fun one that you ride a boat the whole way through. Wow. And my but grandma guided at that cave, and my dad still guides at that cave. He's probably driving those boats through that cave right We're now. In Pennsylvania. Um, right smack in the middle of the state. If you've heard of Penn State University, okay. right close to Penn State is Penn's Cave. And it's the largest all water cavern um, tour in the country. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, if, if you go uh, ask for Marty. Marty. And tell him that his, his boy sent you. So how did you get involved then? Dad worked there. It was, it was a high school job working at the cave. And it was a college job. And then I became a fifth grade school teacher. And it was my summer job working at the cave. And then I, was, I just found myself always waiting for the summer mm -hmm. to be back in the cave. And I'm like, well, maybe I should just look into what other caves I can yeah. work at. So now uh, the cave is my classroom. Okay. And do you give tours yourself? Do you take oh, yes. people every through? Every park ranger here does a little bit of everything. So one day you might be roving the big room. The next day you might be taking people on an adventure tour down in the lower cave with ropes and ladders and helmets. These walls oh. are designed as a lint trap to try to anything that we shed yeah, is hopeful, as much there. as possible stays on the trail. And, and we just go through with knee pads and little brushes and we've cleaned up just in the last three decades, 400 pounds of lint from this cave. Just pure lint. Because we, we separate from the trash that we clean up too. Mm -hmm. So we, because they literally have a lint count that they're keeping track of. Yeah. What do you use to pick the lint up? <laughs> we got our gloves on. We use tweezers to pick it off the, uh, the cave popcorn nodules. We use little brushes and brooms to get it off the, the floor. It's all hand-picked. Do you imagine if I made you keep track of all the lint in our house? No. <laughs> so a lot of these popcorn stalagmites remind me of the terracotta warriors that you see in China, in Xi'an, Providence, right? When mommy went to China, I saw the terracotta warriors and they look very similar. There's a whole bunch of them just lined up. And supposedly some of the largest caves are in southern China. We'll have to go look that up and see. That'd be cool. Do you have another mile? Okay. I can't go turn You guys can't? No, I'm freezing. Alright, well, I guess. Then I guess we'll go this way and cut our way back around. Not too long ago in the news, there were some boys that were stuck in a cave for, I think, close to a month. 
Okay, so now we are gonna walk a mile and actually be able to get out of the cave. So we're gonna work together and we're gonna rotate with this jacket, okay? Can we do that? Okay, you can put your hand inside. They're waiting for you, let's do it. Uh, no, you took a picture yourself. Sorry. I can get Can you see where we're going though? Yes. You need oh guys, there's a ladder. Check this out. This is where they explore. Look at this. They go. Oh my Be gosh. Careful, don't leave. Yeah, so oh wow. Look at that. The, but this don't want to lose this camera over there. The ladder onto are... it, Nate and Steve. How okay. the ladder's broken. How do they fix it? Whoa, over the, oh my goodness. There's another cave down there, don't you? Know? Way, Do there's no. Do not lean, I wanna keep you forever. Yeah, oh wow. Okay. Um. This is pretty scary, maybe we should have went the other way. Oh, check this out guys, wow. Look right up here. Look up. What do you think of that? Is it a hole? Yep. Look at that. Look over, Katie. Look at, is that where the bats hide? Where's the left? Left. Right. Left. Is that. So this room that we're in is shaped like a cross that we're walking through. We just completed our tour of the Carlsbad Caverns National Park and it is definitely a must see on your list. We were able to do our Model 3 drive and so as long as you plan right with the supercharging, this would be a stop that you need to make on your trip. Some of the options that I would recommend is spend the night, do the sunset bat tour um, so that you could see all the bats leaving the cave at about 6.30 at sunset. Um, but just walking through these caves was definitely worth it. With little kids, it's a little hard, so we chose to take the elevator down and the elevator up. That saves us about a mile of hiking down 700 feet with different switchbacks. But um, I think all three kids were able to walk most of the way. I had to carry him about half of the time, but it was worth it, and we're really thankful that we got to experience the Carlsbad Caverns. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Okay, so we just left the Carlsbad Caverns National Park. We are on the road. We have service again, so we are able to put in the GPS, the Van Horn Supercharger. It says we are 93 miles away, and it should arrive with 20% battery left here. Our plan by doing it this way was to hopefully save us an hour or two of not having to go down to Van Horn, back up to the Carlsbad Cavern, and then down to Van Horn. But by choosing to cut through El Paso, hopefully we'll have saved us two hours of driving. So that was the choice that we made and we'll see if it pays off.
Well, can you believe it, guys? We are in Van Horn, Texas. We made it. The car performed just as we had anticipated, although maybe as Steve had anticipated, I had a bit of range anxiety on the way to the caverns. But I want you guys to see, there are 48 miles left on this charge. We charged our car 100% up to 308, 303 miles, drove to the Carlsbad Caverns National Park, then took the detour down to Van Horn, which was another 100 miles, and we had the 48 miles to spare. I don't know why I was so anxious about it, but we are very thankful. So we're gonna do some charging here and get back on the road, maybe drive through the night so that we can keep going and make it to Dallas in the morning. Here's a book for you. Thank you. There's a book for you. And here's a book for you. Okay. Uh, on the inside, if we open up to the first page, there we go. It's going to tell you all the different activities. And for these two books, you'll have to finish at least six of the activities. And in this one here, you'll finish at least seven. Okay. Now, I know you already went down in the cave, so that's one of the activities that you've already done. Stay on the what? Pile. Go ahead. P A T H E T R I A L. R I A H. Is that right? Good job. What's the last thing? No food, drinks, or gum are allowed in the cave. Only where? Outside. Outside. That's How do you spell it? O U T. S I U After T After T Outside S I D E S I D E Wait, what's your D? Okay. Children and adults should what together? What? Stay. Stay together. S T A Y Okay. Do not what the cave formations. Do not touch. touch. Good job. T O U C C H. Bullseye. What does the next one say? Leave rocks, plants, animals, and anything. Read that nice and loud, Nathan. Leave rocks, plants, and animals, and anything else that belongs here in it. In its where? Place. Place. P. Okay, and then the last place. Respect the other visit visitor by speaking in a. Does it say respect the other visitors by speaking in a? Quiet. I think they're gonna say soft. Soft. Yes. Okay. Let me see. Let me see those. Okay, we go back. That's a great answer, yeah. See? It feels cold We're on your skin. CK? Uh, uh, actually, that begins, yes, yeah, C, but old. Now, how do you spell old? O. Good. L. Old. Let me see. Cold. Great job, Nathan. Cold. Good. Ah. All right, guys. So, have you ever been in a cave before? This was our first time. So first time in the cave. Huh? So how did you like it? It was cold. It was cold? Oh, it was cold, yeah? And did you... it was cool when the slag my and slag tight was touching each other. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what that's called? Oh, sure. It's called a column. So whenever, so the stalactite actually makes the stalagmite because the water drips from the stalactite on the ground that eventually makes the stalagmite. And then whenever they get so close and they start touching, it's called a column. 
So I know in the cave you weren't allowed to touch any of the formations, but this is a part of the cave. It's soda straws, so you see how they're hollow? These are called soda straws, these are stalactites, and on the outside is popcorn, which is another t different type of formation, so you guys can go ahead and touch it if you like. Are you ready to see those? So these are some of the bats we have in our uh, park. So the Mexican freetail, also known as Brazilian freetail, is the very large colony that lives in our cave, and that's kind of the bats that we're famous for. Um, these bats specifically, they love colonating in huge groups. Um, under the Congress Bridge in Austin, Texas, there's around two to three million there. Um, also in Bracken Cave, there's several million in there. And it's thought to believe that that is the largest uh, congregation of mammals in the world besides humans. So they um, are mammals, right? Those are true and false. <laughs> so you see, now can you tell me the difference of why you think this one's called the free tail if you look at them? Because it's smaller. Yeah. Close, yeah? What's his tail, Katie? What do you see that's different about them? all the tails? This one has a tail that's laying down. Mm -hmm. Do you see how it's kind of uh, isn't connected with skin like these other ones. See how it looks almost like a web? Yeah, so that's, what, that's where it gets its name free tail from. And this one looks soft. Mm -hmm. Well, but look at the web. See how it's like a straight like fur? But this just has a long line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bats are very close to uh, the same bone structure as us. So if you look, their wings are actually hands. So the scientific name for their order is Chiroptera, which means hands wing. So if you're a bat, and what you would do is these four fingers, they would grow right down where your knees are and then they would connect with, uh, with skin just like these ones are. You see these are its fingers. Wow. And then your thumb would be left out as a, like a little hook so they can hook on to the side of the wall um, so and other stuff. So you're saying those are like the, the same. veins mm -hmm. are actually the fingers. Yeah, these, these bones right here, those you can are see. Bones. Yep, wow. those okay. are the, the same as our, as our hand. Huh. So that's where they get their name. So chiropter means hand wing. Um, the big, the big towns and bat uh, can hear, uh, no I'm sorry, the pallid bat, uh, they eat centipedes and scorpions and they can hear their footsteps on the ground and that's how they locate them. And tell them what you drew. I made a scorpion and that's the flashlight. Oh very good, cool. So when you shine a yellow, f a black light on the scorpion, mm -hmm. it turns green. Yeah, yeah, it does glow up, that's very cool, awesome. All right, I'll set this to the side and then we'll get you guys all swore. Ooh. So help me in, they are blind, right? Nope. They're they can see blind. just as well as you. That's one of the misconceptions. Oh, yeah, oh I man, right. I messed You're up wrong. the question. Yeah, yeah so... I thought um, it was all radar. Huh? Nope. It's not. No, no, no. They can see just as good as us. Sonar. Sonar. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I think he's off on... Sonar. Yeah, yeah they can see as good as about <laughs> the average human. Um, for the most part, but, but they do, they, well yeah, because they live in a cave where there's no natural light, so our eyes need light to function, um, so they use echolocation to get out of the cave and also to locate bugs uh, while they're, because they hunt at night. Wow. Yeah, so that's another reason why we don't allow, so at our bat flight program, we don't allow pictures or anything like that because any yes. little noise, any uh, light or anything really does affect the bats, and we've seen like changes in their behavior. So, all right guys, so I've gone through your books and they look good to me. Um, but before we continue, you guys are going to have to make a promise or an oath to the National Park Service. Do you guys have any questions about that before you take the oath? Yes, what is it? Yes, what is it? What is it? Yeah, so you're, you're promising, <laughs> you're promising to uh, protect your, the national parks and the natural resources in it and also uh, be an advocate for keeping the, par the, uh, the parks alive. So we can have, maybe your future kids will come to the park and you get to go in the cave. Sound good? Awesome. So you guys got to raise your right hand for me. You're going to repeat after me. That's after right. I say I, can you guys say your first name for me? Sound good? So I. Nathan. What's your name, Matthew? Yeah. All right. Katie. Yeah, we have I'm proud to be. Yes. Yeah. Just check. Repeat that. Mm. I'm proud to be. A National Park Service. National Park oh Service. Goodness. National oh Park Service. Junior Ranger. Junior Ranger. I promise to protect. <laughs> explore. Explore. And learn about. Learn about my national parks. National parks. I will share my experiences. I will share my experience. 
and knowledge, and knowledge of these special places, special places with my friends and family. I'm going to eat all my vegetables, go to bed at a reasonable time, and not pick all my siblings. Bam, do some knuckles. You got that on video, right? Yeah, I was like, all right, we're good. So you shake with your right hand, sir. You accept the award with the left. Shake with the right. Accept with the left. Very good. Shake with the right. Accept with the left. There you go. Let me sign these.